Exactly what does it take to be considered one of the top 10 computer science colleges in the country? These are the MITs, the Carnegie Mellons, some of the most prestigious universities in the world. And today we're going to dive into all the numbers behind what it means to get into and to attend one of these schools. Doing the research for this video, it became clear that these schools in the top 10 have a lot in common. These are some of the core underlying components of what it takes to get into a school of this caliber, what it's actually going to be like once you're there, and what a lot of students are doing after they graduate. But I also want to call attention to the outliers. These are the factors that make certain schools stand out for better or worse in certain areas, whether it's which schools are a little bit easier or harder to get into, which ones might be a little bit more affordable what the actual experience is going to be like in the classroom as a student at any one of these given schools. All right, the first thing I want to dive into is applying. Basically, what is the bar to get into one of these places as a student? Full disclaimer, all the numbers here are going to be best estimates. Schools aren't always the most transparent about sharing this kind of stuff, but as long as we keep that in mind and the fact that these numbers will shift a little bit year over year, this should give us a pretty good ballpark estimate of what the real numbers should look like. So there are a lot of facets involved in getting into a college, but one of the most commonly thrown around metrics is SAT scores. Unsurprisingly, every one of the schools on this list has a strong average SAT score, and my guess would be that for some of the schools with slightly lower SAT scores, that average is likely higher when you only consider computer science majors instead of the acceptance criteria for all majors. It's worth pointing out that there isn't a direct correlation here between SAT score and school rank, because beyond a certain point, the difference between getting a 1500 and a 1600 on the SAT isn't really a good predictor of student success. Also, these numbers are averages, not minimums, which means you shouldn't think that you need to get that score to have a chance of actually getting into that school. And on the flip side, you shouldn't feel that if you do get that number, you're guaranteed acceptance into that school. Plenty of people get 1600s every year and don't get into these types of schools because there's obviously more to your application process than just the SAT score. Along the same lines, let's take a quick look at the acceptance rate for all these different schools, specifically for their computer science programs. These numbers are especially hard to estimate because a lot of these colleges have different acceptance rates for computer science than the college as a whole. Clearly, all of these colleges are going to be very competitive, and most of them have acceptance rates of less than 10%. The main exception here is the in-state acceptance rate at some of the state schools. For example, if you're applying to Georgia Tech as an in-state student, the acceptance rate will be a lot higher than if you're not from Georgia. Also, something else that I noticed when I was looking through the data, it looks like every year the acceptance rates seem to keep going down at a lot of these schools, and the reason is more and more people keep applying to them, but the schools aren't increasing the number of people that they accept every year at the same rate, which means every year it just gets a little bit harder to get into one of these programs. Okay, at this point, let's transition into what it actually looks like to be a student at one of these colleges. Let's assume that you got in. What would it actually be like for you to go there? Geographically, the colleges on this list are pretty well split between the East and West Coast, without a whole lot going on in the middle, with the exception of Illinois. Obviously, this isn't to say that there aren't any strong computer science programs in the middle of the country, but if that's where you live and you want to go to one of these schools, then there's a good chance you're going to have to travel. In terms of tuition, the biggest delta is between private and public schools. Tuition is well into the $50,000 to $60,000 range at the private schools on this list, compared to some of the public colleges that are in the $30,000 range. There's a few important things that I want to call out about these numbers, the first of which being this doesn't include room and board or any of the other expenses associated with going to college. So even if you were paying that full number of $60,000, you would also be paying another $15,000 to $20,000 on top for room and board, your books, etc. This also isn't factoring in any sort of financial aid packages because that's going to be highly variable depending on your individual financial situation. So you might end up paying a lot less than this, but it's worth doing your own research into this and depending on your own finances, figuring out what that number is going to look like for you. And then finally, depending on where you live, the tuition at one of these public schools might not just be a little bit less than the private schools. If you're getting in-state tuition, it's going to be significantly less than going to a private school. Combine this with potentially relaxed admission requirements, and these schools become a lot more accessible if you're a resident, but if you're out of state, then you're out of luck. In terms of the dynamics of classes, there's two interconnected metrics that I think are worth calling out, the total number of undergraduate students and the student to faculty ratio. This can make a huge difference in your college experience because it dictates whether or not you're going to be spending time in large lecture halls or in smaller classroom settings that are more discussion oriented. Now, one of these isn't inherently better than the other, but admittedly, it is going to be a lot easier to form close relationships with your professors if you have a smaller ratio compared to at a school where you have 150 kids in a lecture hall, we're all competing for attention from one professor. So there's a widespread here with schools like Caltech and MIT having really low ratios, and schools like UC Berkeley, Georgia Tech, Illinois, and U Washington all having over 20 students per faculty member. 
Naturally, this does correlate decently to the number of students on campus. Larger schools aren't scaling up the number of professors to accommodate having more students, and instead they're increasing their class sizes. And if you don't currently have a good feel for what you prefer, then I would definitely recommend doing some research into this. Uh, large schools definitely can have a different atmosphere and different resources available to students compared to smaller schools. There's a lot of other things that you should look for when you're considering student life at one of these schools that are a little bit more subjective, they're a bit harder to measure with numbers, and I would recommend if you're seriously considering going to one of these schools, watching videos from actual students at that school talking about what it's like to go there and their own personal experiences. But at this point, I want to transition into talking about the last piece of this, which is what are student outcomes after they graduate and how much are they making in the industry? What types of companies are they going to? What are they doing once they finish up at that school? The first piece of this is pretty easy to measure, and it's just what percentage of students are actually graduating from the program. It's important to note that this is only the four-year graduation rate. This is most applicable to Georgia Tech, which has a really low four-year graduation rate, but it goes up significantly to roughly 90% if you take five or six years. Naturally, spending another year or two at a college is going to cost you more money, so if this is something you're concerned about, I would definitely recommend looking more into these graduation rates to see if people can graduate in four years or if you really do need a fifth or sixth year. Personally, as someone who went to Georgia Tech, I was able to graduate within four years and so did many of my friends, but this is something to keep in mind compared to a lot of the other schools on this list which have a four-year graduation rate of 70 to 90 percent. The second part of this though, which is a little bit harder to measure, is what people are doing once they actually graduate. For some people this might be going to work for a company, for other people it might be going to grad school, or anything else. I'll include some links down in the description to the outcomes pages for different colleges. Some of these schools do like to hide this information, but this generally covers how much new grads are making, as well as which companies they're going to, and the job placement rate. If you have specific companies that you're hoping to work for, this is a good way to figure out which colleges are feeders for your favorite companies, as well as to get an idea of what your salary might be once you graduate. Across the board, you'll see a lot of graduates going into big tech and making six-figure salaries straight out of school, but I'll let you dig into that more for yourself. If you know you have specific companies you want to work for, you can take a look and see which colleges seem to be feeding a lot of students into those companies. Obviously, all these numbers are only one piece of deciding where to go to college, so if you get accepted into any of these programs, congratulations, but you should definitely check it out for yourself. You should go on a tour, and you should get some perspectives from current students to see what they do and don't like about their school. And for anyone who's specifically interested in Georgia Tech's computer science program, I've made a bunch of videos about that over the years that I'll link for you if you want to check those out. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.